welcome to the Clan Macpherson Museum. It's the home of the clan, the home away from home, and the home for visitors who are both Macphersons and folks who'd like to experience a good bit of Highland hospitality. Our home has several rooms and it houses the relics and treasures of our broad community and our family. In this first room, we introduce you to our chief, Jamie, and all the insignia that make up our clan family. There are lots of cats. You'll see our motto everywhere, touch not the cat, but a glove. And you'll see our genealogy of the chiefs and our lineage behind you. So you know why this man is who he is and why he's important. So here in the second room of the Clan Macpherson Museum, we come to the early clan history, and it's all about some key objects of mythical power that we have from our clan history. First and foremost, we have the green banner here, which carried into battle ensures that the Macphersons will not be defeated. Um, to the right here, we have the Black Chanter, which has similar magical properties, ensuring victory for the Clan Macpherson. It falls from heaven at the Battle of the North Inch in 1396. And then over in this corner, we have one of the most prized objects in the whole museum, Jamie Macpherson's fiddle, smashed on the gallows before he was hung at the beginning of the 18th century. Room three is our Jacobite room. The Jacobite period is an important one for the clan. We were active in it. We didn't quite make it to Culloden, but we played an important part nonetheless. And this room is full of object to do with the Jacobites. It's a narrow room because it's quite a threatening period, quite a scary period, but it's a good one. So after the dark and scary Jacobite period, we enter a new, bright, airy space in the museum where we talk about the later 18th century. And here, Macphersons are recovering from the cat catastrophe of the 45, and they're going out into the world and making their fortunes. Our next room is all about heraldry and tartan. We put them together because they're both visual signifiers of identity. They tell you who you are, but they also tell others who you are. You know I'm a Macpherson because I'm wearing this tartan. And they're both things that became codified and recognized in their codes at about the same time, roughly between the 18th century and the Victorians. So in the next room at the museum, we move from Tartan to this magnificent image of old Clooney, the 20th chief, who really establishes this image of the Tartan clad Highland chief. It's quite an extraordinary image and it reflects the significance that old Clooney and his family had during this era. They are great friends with Queen Victoria. They influence Victoria's love of all things Highland. And part of this room features that very close relationship between old Clooney and his family and the royals themselves. We also talk about how Macphersons continue to go out into the world, how empire is this great work that Macphersons do across the globe. So in this room, we arrive at the 20th century, where stories of Macpherson belonging are told through a number of different strands. Obviously, war features very heavily. So we have here Sir Tommy's uniform, which uh, celebrates his tremendous feats during World War II. 
But we also have lots of other stories of belonging, such as sport, shinty here, and piping. The final room, Clan and Community, is all about the museum, the Clan Macpherson Association, and celebrating clanship around the world. One of the events we're highlighting is the annual gathering in Badenoch takes place every August and cousins from around the world get together for a weekend of clan fun. So Jim, I've been visiting the Clan McPherson Museum for decades, and I know that it abounds in wildcats. This is a particularly impressive specimen, and I wonder if you can tell us anything about this ferocious looking beast. So here we have a wildcat called Clooney, named after the chief at one of the gatherings. And the wildcat is the key symbol of the Clan McPherson. Our motto is touch not the cat. So it's a warning to beware approaching a cat that is ungloved, that has its claws out. So beware the Macphersons. Um, this sounds black chanter, another venerated object, so famous amongst the Macphersons, and such an important object in terms of our martial prowess. What's it all about? This is the black chanter. It's a great object of clan legend, and it supposedly fell from the heavens at the Battle of the North Inge in 1396. You can see the picture of this up here, it's the guy catching, catching the chanter. Um, it's slightly broken, it's slightly smashed, because it hit the ground. And it's one of those objects that means a lot to us. If the chanter is played in battle, we cannot lose. So Marie, we've got a beautiful looking object here, very, very decorative, purely made of gold. But for all its beauty, I think it commemorates a fairly gruesome episode in the first in history. Can you tell us something about it? It's a great object indeed, Bruce. It's a commemorative medallion struck after the Battle of Culloden to commemorate the Duke of Cumberland and the government forces. And Cumberland's face is on one side, but on the other side, the one we have on display now, um, you see a depiction of the Battle of Culloden, which the Macphersons were famously late for because they were occupied otherwise, they'd been given other orders. Um, but we think this medallion is fantastic, um, gruesome and horrifying, but fantastic, because it's got a depiction of the government forces mowing down the Jacobites with the inscription, Rebellion Justly Rewarded. So Marie, I know that this is your favourite corner of the whole of the museum, but there's obviously some sort of connection between this sort of superhero type character down here, between this rather handsome fellow here and this quote. What is the connection? This wall in the museum is all about James Macpherson and the poems of Ossian. You can see some of the first editions on display here. Um, James edited, translated, made up, put together Gallic poetry in English for the first time, and it was a huge success. Um, it was a worldwide bestseller, and it changed the world, kick-started romanticism. And we are fortunate to have two of the first editions of various other bits and pieces on display here, including the, this handsome copy of a portrait of James by David Martin, and this illustration, um, which is from a new illustrated edition of Ossian by Eileen Budd and shows one of the scenes from the poems. So three more fantastic portraits, one of a gentleman in fine uniform, one of a lady in a spectacularly garbed, bewhiskered man here. All Macphersons, I guess. What's the connection? What's the story? So here we have Robert Barclay Macpherson, this splendid Mr. Darcy-esque figure, his wife Eliza, and Duncan Macpherson, all three representing the extraordinary relationship between Macphersons and military service in empire and colonial administration. This is the last in a long, long line of chief's portraits. Um, 
obviously the chief who sadly passed away earlier this year, the father of our current chief, the 28th chief. Can you tell us a little bit about Sir William McPherson and his significance for both the clan but also wider society? So we end the 20th century room with Sir William McPherson, who not only was an exceptional leader of the clan, a great clan chief who promotes this idea of first among equals, but he also plays such a significant role in British life through his inquiry into the racist murder of Stephen Lawrence. It really is one of the most extraordinary and influential legal judgments in British history. My visit today was absolutely amazing. The museum is incredible. It's, it, it reduced me to tears, actually. I was so overwhelmed by its wonder, its glory, its beauty. There's been so much work put into it, so much thought, so much passion. It just says how wonderful the Clan McPherson is and how personal it is, as well as being open to everybody um, nationwide. I think it's an absolutely awesome place. It's an amazing display of all the artefacts um, and taking, going around it, um, the sense of story and theme um, was a wonderful journey. So it's been brilliant. It's absolutely fantastic. After seeing this museum for many decades, quite different. This is, this is a revelation, I tell you. It's, it's phenomenal. <laughs>